Coming up next, in-depth news analysis. You're listening to Korea 24 from KBS World Radio. The ruling Democratic Party and three minor opposition parties last week joined hands to fast-track several controversial bills, including one to revise the nation's criminal procedure. Aimed at redrawing the parameters of police and prosecutorial investigative power, the bill abolishes the prosecution's command over the nation's police and has sparked a feud between the two law enforcement authorities. To dive into this problem today, we have invited ruling Democratic Party representative Pyo chang Mr. Pyo is a former police officer and was also a professor at the South Korean Police Academy before he became a lawmaker, serving as a member of the Special Judiciary Reform Committee in Parliament. And to represent the other side of the spectrum, we have invited from the Liberty Korea Party's former Supreme Council member, Lee Tae Young. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Let me begin with you, Representative Pure, and let's begin with laying out the changes that are being proposed in this bill. What is the gist of your party's proposed revision to the criminal code, and how would you want to redraw the parameters for the police and the prosecution? Yeah, the the essence of, of the proposed reform is to introduce uh, the democratic principles of checks and balances to the criminal uh, justice procedure. Uh, we would like to separate the police investigation process uh, from the uh, prosecutor's command and control. And uh, on, on the other hand, uh, we would like to keep the um, uh, control and uh, uh, control and oversight uh, powers and means of the prosecution th- authorities uh, into the police in- investigation procedure. So I- it is a kind of um, democratization of the cr- criminal justice procedure. But what is this, what's the purpose of the legislation there? I mean, what mm. tangible differences will the bill actually make though? Yeah, the first uh, difference will be the um, um, abolishing the prosecution's uh, in- interference interference with the police investigation procedure, they will not be able to control or intervene with the police investigation procedure until the police ask the prosecutor to uh, request uh, warrants uh, to the just to the uh, judiciary, uh, or uh, until the police hand the case over to th- uh, the prosecutors uh, for prosecution. Uh, when uh, the police hand over the case to the uh, prosecutors, then the p- uh, prosecutors can review the cases and evidences and and then they can request the police to carry out more further investigation. Mm. Uh, uh, also, if the prosecutor finds any kind of illegal illegalities from the uh, police investigation process, then the prosecutor can carry out criminal investigation into the police wrongdoings. Mm, I want to ask one more question. But yeah. why has uh, your party decided that this is needed? I mean, what what has been the mm. problem so far? Uh, the current uh, criminal justice procedure uh, actually was drawn in 1954. And um, the system actually allows the prosecutors the almighty power. The prosecutor can carry out uh, their own criminal investigation. Also, they can command and direct the police investigation. And prosecutors can um, decide uh, decide whether or not to uh, prosecute a case. Uh, so uh, that kind of... Uh, uh, monopoly of power in the criminal justice procedure actually uh, have been argued to be the roots and causes of uh, uh, widespread corruption in, in the Korean society. Mm. And uh, so the people and, and the society actually have requested a reform and uh, to, um, uh, to uh, I mean, uh, lessen the the powers of uh, the prosecutors so uh, the reform actually aims to uh, separate the police pro- uh, p- the police criminal investigation process from the prosecutor's control mm. and it will actually raise the um, um, the balance of power between the the prosecutor and the and the accused 
so it will uh, actually uh, be expected to um, raise the um, level of uh, justice mm. in the criminal justice system. Mm. Tackling corruption seems to be one of the main key issues here. Sure, yeah. Mr. Lee, let me turn to you now. I mean, criticism of the bill has perhaps been most prominently highlighted mm. By the current prosecutor general himself, Mun Muil, he has controversially, openly uh, criticised it. What's the chief prosecutor's arguments, and does it align with your views and that of the parties? I think uh, the prosecutor general uh, Moon has uh, said many times that the prosecution itself is ready, and they also recognise the need for reform. <clears throat> and what he's saying is that you know over the years they have been doing that. So for example, in terms of you know number of uh, investigations, for example, you know it naturally has been allocated between the prosecutions and the police force. So there are a lot of uh, when we understand this new bill, uh, what you have to understand is that you know it's not like police is getting their first time the initiating power of you know investigation. They already have that. It's just that they don't have to end the investigation. So it's a bit technical, but we don't have time for that. But point is that prosecution is ready for the reform, but the current bill itself is actually damaging the checks and balances that Representative Pio has mentioned. I think everybody wants and everybody wants balance of power. And I think the prosecution itself over the years have not done a you know, great job in terms of you know, being uh, independent or being very objective. Uh, we've accused them themselves uh, of being very politically driven before. But they are ready for the reform. But the current bill itself uh, and clauses it within are actually hurting the checks and balances. And plus, the police force, as you know, is much bigger uh, organization than the prosecution. And, uh, and, and it's very difficult to control the big organization. And if you give them too much power, uh, then you don't know where it's gonna, you know, where it's gonna go. Mm. So they do need to have some sort of uh, control or an oversight uh, that it already exists in the place. So if you you cannot take that away immediately, uh, if you want to reform, you might want to do that over the time. But the bill itself is, I think, giving a immediate power or immediate removal of oversight and control by the prosecution. Uh, over a police force, which he feels uh, is dangerous. And it is pretty much in line with my party's uh, you know, argument uh, throughout this process. But I would say that it's not just my party, but uh, as you've seen over the last couple of weeks, you know, through, through this fast track uh, procedure, that it was not just my party, but the Parim Miradang uh, also had the uh, very strong uh, view an argument against the original bill. Mm. I think they have, you know, sort of uh, put forward their own version of the bill, but that bill also represents uh, the fact that if you give too much power to the police force immediately from the get-go, it could also, uh, it might not, you know, end up or result in the things that we originally planned. It might turn into a, you know, a monster. Mm. Prosecutor Chief Mumuil originally made the criticism last week while he was overseas, but now he's come back. And in Korea today, he once again uh, made the case uh, against the sort of reform bill. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. The prosecution is reflecting on the criticisms of its past and is sincerely setting forth alternative proposals. I think that, along with the judiciary control over investigations, the initiation and closing of cases must be distinguished to wholly protect the basic rights of the people. This principle must be observed at all investigative state agencies, including the prosecution. Representative Pure, I mean, mm-hmm. listening to that, what is your response to that? Do you think he is really putting the rights of the people ahead first? Um, yeah, I think uh, he had to say what he, he he would like to say, but uh, uh, he mentioned about judiciary control, but that judiciary control should be carried out by the judiciary, the court, the judges, not by the prosecutors. Prosecutors belong to the ad- administration, not the judiciary. And also the uh, basic rights of the people can be protected more effectively by uh, the defense lawyers, 
or the press or the civil civil rights groups, not by the prosecutors. Prosecutors and the police are on the same side to uh, make somebody guilty. So you know he would like to uh, um, uh, stress that police should be controlled, should police should be monitored. I I agree with that, but uh, not by the prosecutors, but by the democratic um, oversight bodies or by the press or or by the uh, defense lawyers. Uh, that uh, will be the um, further um, reform, um, you know. And also, we actually prepared. Um, uh, several police re- reform bills, and uh, they were submitted to the to the parliament, and uh, it will be reviewed. And if the bills will be passed, then the police will be uh, uh, more tightly reviewed and controlled by the democratic uh, procedures. Mr. Lee, I mean, what's your response to that? I mean, what do you think of the fact that Moon Mill has gotten involved in this and making comments like these as well? Well, I think, you know, Pio had, I'm not Representative Pio, Moon Mill had to say what he had to say. I mean, it's like, you know, I agree with that. It was a sort of, you know, textbook response to a question that he received from the, you know, press. So I don't take too much, uh, I don't read into too much of his, you know, uh, wording. But I, I think he has expressed, uh, continuing from the last week's uh, his comment that he still hasn't changed his position. I think that's what he said. I mean, he did mention that um, that he's happy or he agrees uh, with the fact that this you know dialogue or this conversation has broadened. Uh, I think he's responding to the fact that Blue House came up uh, or the, at least the, you know Chogu came up with uh, some sort of Twitter uh, comment. So I think he's responding to that. But uh, going back to the original substance, uh, I think Pio, uh, the Moon Muil still has a point. Um, you know. One of the things that we have to, when we change this sort of tectonic shift in the system, and this is a big system, right? And and this is, believe it or not, related to every day of our, you know, citizens' lives, is that, you know, you also have to look at the uh, people sentiment. Now, I'm not saying, I would say 99% of the police force is, you know, uh, very good, you know, good young you know, not only young, but men and women in mm. the force. And I definitely have a huge respect for them. But at the same time, you also have to remember that there is a public sentiment that the police force also have failed uh, to live up to that trust. So, for example, you know, I don't want to bring up the Burning Sun, you know, example, but that has been one of the cases. And I would say go further. And, you know, what recently happened, um, uh, the the death of, uh, of a young uh, uh, junior high school kid was uh, killed by or you know murdered by his I think, surrogate father her surrogate father I think even when we see in that cases police have so much vast information and experiences but they haven't lived up to that experience information to prevent these very very sad and preventable cases now if we give them this new power uh, when we haven't seen the, this trust build up done yet you know, how can the public say, you know, are we going to be even safer with this? Or are we going to be, uh, we, you know, faced with, like I said before, a monster who doesn't have any control over their activities and power? Representative Pio, I think you might have a response to that, as, especially as a former police officer yourself. <laughs> I mean, uh, Mr. Lee has mm-hmm. raised a very pertinent recent mm-hmm. issues, mm-hmm. Uh, but they're also the prosecu- prosecutors have also mm-hmm. not had covered themselves in glory in the past either, we could say. Yes, I uh, agree with the uh, uh, Mr. Lee's point. And uh, that is why we need this bill. You know, the police has been uh, controlled and monitored by the prosecutors. The result of that is uh, actual lack of public trust in, in the police procedure. So we would like to um, uh, hand the police over to the people from the hand of the prosecutors. And also, uh, under this uh, current uh, system, police investigation do not have uh, autonomy or responsibility. They rely on the directions and and decision making by the prosecutors. So if we pass this bill and if uh, the police will be given uh, the power to initiate and carry out and close a case, then they should be responsible for the uh, whole process of the criminal pr- investigation process and also the result of that. And that means the police should be uh, more professional, 
more ready and also more uh, liable to the people. And, and that uh, will change the police and that will raise uh, the public trust in, in the police, I think. Mr. Lee, do you agree with that? Can, can that happen? Or, or is this, as you said, the issue is with the, with the police, therefore, you know, you can't go from the, that, think, the other way around? I think it goes back to my uh, comment a few minutes ago. You know, for sake of argument, if the police force was, you know, full of people like Representative Pio and, you know, his good colleagues... I would say this might work, but the fact is that until now, we've seen there had been many moles and many, um, you know, corruptive, uh, corruption cases within police force that hasn't been up to the par of uh, a public sentiment and expectation. I think that everybody agrees with that, for sure. Uh, now, with the system, new change in the system will change that? Um, I don't know. It's like chicken and egg question, in a way. Mm. But you know, sometimes when you want to change the system, you really have to look inside and what has been done wrong. And you cannot really blame the system when it has been the people who's been abusing the good system. So I'm not sure whether the new system will make these bad people into good people. I think we really need to have some sort of you know, internal discussions and internal, you know, I don't want to use the word cleansing, but you, know, you need to go through this sort of you know, uh, uh, self uh, self-improvement process or period to be able to ready to uh, be involved in this sort of advanced system that Representative Pure is talking about. Let's look at this in a different way. Representative Pure, what practical differences will the bill make in terms of the police catching bad guys and protecting innocent people? I mean, from the public's point of view, what good might it do if the police and prosecutors' parameters are withdrawn? And is it worth all the political fighting that's been happening recently? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, the new bill um, is expected to, expected to uh, raise the um, uh, level of uh, balance between the prosecutors and the accused. And that means um, the new system will minimize the, the possibility of miscarriage of justice because the current system um, actually makes the police and the uh, prosecutors uh, working together. They join forces. And the, uh, the accused will be um, left alone. And, and that uh, means um, the, the current system gives a superpower to the prosecutors. So the current um, uh, conviction rate in the first round uh, 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 court is uh, nearly to uh, 97 percent, but uh, in the in the new system, uh, the prosecutors will uh, will have uh, less power, and the, the accused will have more access uh, access to the um, documents and evidences, and will have more um, assistance from the defense lawyers. So that will raise the um, uh, balances and and the uh, justice. Of, of the uh, system. And sec secondly, the police will have uh, more autonomy in their uh, criminal investigation. And also they will have more responsibility and they, they will be liable to directly to the people and, and, the, and, and to the court. And so the police will uh, do their best to uh, um, develop their own skills and methods and tools of criminal investigation, and that will enhance the effectiveness of the of the police and professionalism uh, of the police uh, criminal investigation. And thirdly, and and uh, most importantly, uh, the new system uh, will divide the powers, divide uh, the um, functions and duties of the police uh, from the prosecutorial um, control and command, and that will. Um, uh, actually, we expect to um, uh, improve the uh, the level of justice uh, and fairness in the whole criminal justice system, and that that will benefit all of us. Maybe we can look at how this compares to other countries as well. I mean, Representative Pure, you studied criminal justice in the UK. Mr. Lee, you studied in the US. Uh, let me start with you, Mr. Lee. What lessons might Korea be able to take away from these other countries and about how to arrange and assign authority between the police and prosecution? You know, I, I do agree with Representative Pyo in the sense that, you know, we need to think of some sort of mechanism to divide powers. 
Uh, and before we walked into the studio, we talked about in the U.S. how the uh, district attorney is being elected by the people. And I think that is something that we should explore. Uh, it, it, and that can be done within the system that we have already. So if you, if we can somehow think of on the ways in which we can improve the existing system, I'm all for it. But if you just change, if you just overhaul the entire system like that. Uh, you know that could definitely bring some sort of damage to this, you know society that we live in. Uh, so and takes years and years and years to to get used to. And there's so much pain in between. Mm. So and people are you know this is a democratic society. People are used to uh, elect representatives. They are used to now elect you know uh, even the education you know the, the people. Uh, represented by the provinces. So I think if we move towards that area, it could be one of the examples that uh, could be shown as an area of improvement. Representative Pure, what's your response to that? I mean, mm-hmm. do we need to take lessons from other places? Or as uh, Mr. Lee has said, we shouldn't mm-hmm. overhaul everything, we should just incrementally change things? Oh, yes. Uh, I, I agree with the, uh, Mr. Lee. And also we have to look into the case of uh, the Britain as well. You know, in, in Britain, in the UK, until 1985, the police uh, had all the powers. They carry out their own criminal investigations. They actually decide to uh, prosecute or not. And also they appoint a, a, an attorney to, um, to take the case to the court. And that kind of uh, mon- uh, monopoly of power actually made the police corrupt. And uh, the... Um, uh, abuse of power cases actually uh, came about uh, in the 1980s. So the UK Parliament decided to change the uh, the system uh, and, and also reform uh, the system. And they introduced the new body called Crown Pros- Prosecution uh, Service. And that change actually uh, raised the public, public trust in the police uh, as well as in the uh, whole criminal justice system. You know, in Korea, it is the um, uh, same, same situation now. The prosecution have all the powers to carry out the investigation, to direct, the, uh, direct command and control the police investigation. And also they uh, uh, have the power to uh, decide to or not to prosecute the case, you know. So we have to uh, make the changes and the reforms as the Brit- Britain did in 1985. And yes, we have uh, merits uh, of incremental changes. And also we have the uh, merits of uh, revolutionary changes. And, you know, in, in our case, actually, we have been trying to change uh, the, the system for over 65 years, since 1954. But we have failed because of the uh, strong challenges and objections from the prosecution authority. Now is the time to make the changes and decisions. We'll have to end the interview there. Well, thank you for your time, gentlemen, both of you. But the bill has been fast-tracked. But there is still some way to go before a final decision on whether it will pass or not. So we'll have to see how that pans out. It'll be great to talk to you both again further down the line. Thank you for coming in today and sharing your thoughts with us. Thank Thank you. you.